episode 97. Do you think that's why he really wanted to come back to Hogwarts, sir? said Harry, to try and find something from one of the other founders? My thoughts precisely, said Dumbledore. But unfortunately, that does not advance us much further, for he was turned away, or so I believe, without the chance to search the school. I am forced to conclude that he never fulfilled his ambition of collecting four founders' objects. He definitely had two. He may have found three. That is the best we can do for now. Even if he got something of Ravenclaw's or of Gryffindor's, that leaves a sixth Horcrux, said Harry, counting on his fingers. Unless he got both? I don't think so, said Dumbledore. I think I know what the sixth Horcrux is. I wonder what you will say when I confess that I have been curious for a while about the behavior of the snake, Nagini. The snake? said Harry, startled. You can use animals as Horcruxes? Well, it is inadvisable to do so, said Dumbledore, because to confine a part of your soul to something that can think and move for itself is obviously a very risky business. However, if my calculations are correct, Voldemort was still at least one Horcrux short of his goal of six when he entered your parents' house with the intention of killing you. He seems to have reserved the process of making Horcruxes for particularly significant deaths. You would certainly have been that. He believed that in killing you, he was destroying the danger the prophecy had outlined. He believed he was making himself invincible. I am sure that he was intending to make his final Horcrux with your death. As we know, he failed. After an interval of some years, however, he used Nagini to kill an old muggle man, and it might then have occurred to him to turn her into his last Horcrux. She underlines the Slytherin connection, which enhances Lord Voldemort's mystique. I think he is perhaps as fond of her as he can be of anything. He certainly likes to keep her close, and he seems to have an unusual amount of control over her, even for a parcel mouth. So, said Harry, the diary's gone, the ring's gone, the cup, the locket, and the snake are still intact, and you think there might be a horcrux that was once Ravenclaw's or Gryffindor's? An admirably succinct and accurate summary, yes, said Dumbledore, bowing his head. So, are you still looking for them, sir? Is that where you've been going when you've been leaving the school? Correct, said Dumbledore. I have been looking for a very long time. I think, perhaps, I may be close to finding another one. There are hopeful signs. And if you do, said Harry quickly, can I come with you and help get rid of it? Dumbledore looked at Harry very intently for a moment before saying, Yes, I think so. I can, said Harry, thoroughly taken aback. Oh, yes, said Dumbledore, smiling slightly. I think you have earned that right. Harry felt his heart lift. It was very good not to hear words of caution and protection for once. The headmasters and headmistresses around the wall seemed less impressed by Dumbledore's decision. Harry saw a few of them shaking their heads, and Phineas Nagellus actually snorted. Does Voldemort know when a horcrux is destroyed, sir? Can he feel it? Harry asked, ignoring the portraits. A very interesting question, Harry. I believe not. I believe that Voldemort is now so immersed in evil, and these crucial parts of himself have been detached for so long, he does not feel as we do. Perhaps at the point of death he might be aware of his loss, but he was not aware, for instance, that the diary had been destroyed until he forced the truth out of Lucius Malfoy. When Voldemort discovered that the diary had been mutilated and robbed of all its powers, I am told that his anger was terrible to behold. 
but I thought he meant Lucius Malfoy to smuggle it into Hogwarts. Yes, he did, years ago, when he was sure he would be able to create more Horcruxes. But still, Lucius was supposed to wait for Voldemort say so, and he never received it, for Voldemort vanished shortly after giving him the diary. No doubt he thought that Lucius would not dare do anything with the Horcrux other than guard it carefully. But he was counting too much upon Lucius's fear of a master who had been gone for years, and whom Lucius believed dead. Of course, Lucius did not know what the diary really was. I understand that Voldemort had told him the diary would cause the Chamber of Secrets to reopen, because it was cleverly enchanted. Had Lucius known he held a portion of his master's soul in his hands, he would undoubtedly have treated it with more reverence. But instead, he went ahead and carried out the old plan for his own ends. By planting the diary upon Arthur Weasley's daughter, he hoped to discredit Arthur and get rid of a highly incriminating magical object in one stroke. Ah, poor Lucius. What with Voldemort's fury about the fact that he threw away the Horcrux for his own gain and the fiasco at the Ministry last year, I would not be surprised if he is not secretly glad to be safe in Azkaban at the moment. Harry sat in thought for a moment, then asked, So, if all of his Horcruxes are destroyed, Voldemort could be killed? Yes. I think so, said Dumbledore. Without his horcruxes, Voldemort will be a mortal man with a maimed and diminished soul. Never forget, though, that while his soul may be damaged beyond repair, his brain and his magical powers will remain intact. It will take uncommon skill and power to kill a wizard like Voldemort, even without his horcruxes. But I haven't got uncommon skill and power, said Harry, before he could stop himself. Yes, you have, said Dumbledore firmly. You have a power that Voldemort has never had. You can... I know, said Harry impatiently. I can love. It was only with difficulty that he stopped himself adding, Big deal! Yes, Harry, you can love said Dumbledore, who looked as though he knew perfectly well what Harry had just refrained from saying, which, given everything that has happened to you, is a great and remarkable thing. You are still too young to understand how unusual you are, Harry. So when the prophecy says that I'll have the power the Dark Lord knows not, it just means love? asked Harry, feeling a little let down. Yes. Just love, said Dumbledore. But Harry, never forget what the prophecy says is only significant because Voldemort made it so. I told you this at the end of last year. Voldemort singled you out as the person who would be most dangerous to him. And in doing so, he made you the person who would be most dangerous to him. But it comes to the same thing. No, it doesn't, said Dumbledore, sounding impatient now. Pointing at Harry with his black, withered hand, he said, You are setting too much store by the prophecy. But, spluttered Harry, you said the prophecy means, If Voldemort had never heard of the prophecy, would it have been fulfilled? Would it have meant anything? Of course not. Do you think every prophecy in the Hall of Prophecy has been fulfilled? But, said Harry, bewildered, but last year you said one of us would have to kill the other. Harry, Harry, only because Voldemort made a grave error and acted on Professor Trelawney's words. If Voldemort had never murdered your father, would he have imparted in you a furious desire for revenge? Of course not, 